the honky tongues again Back where I've really always been Hear the laughter of the crowd Turn the jukebox way up loud Cause I'm back in the honky tongues again I'm delighted to welcome showband legend Billy McFarland to the Life and Times. You're very welcome, Billy. Thank you very much indeed. Yes. Billy, take us back to where you were born and raised. Well, I was born and raised in a little town in County Antrim called Randallstown. And uh, there was one employer in Randallstown, apart from the local shops, but there was one employer called the Old Bleach Linen Company. It was affectionately known as the, the factory at that particular time. And uh, I was only, if you didn't work in the factory, you, you, you left the town, like, you, you, there was only one place to work in the, uh, in Randallstown. And I was uh, educated in a school just outside Randallstown called Terry Gowan Public Elementary School. And a public elementary school in those days, you started school when you were seven and left when you, you were 14. And I had a very nice teacher called Annie Medill. And she was a, a lovely lady and she was a, a very, very good singer. And she taught me a lot about singing. She taught me a lot about breathing. And uh, the first song that she ever learned me was Lily Marlene. And uh, she always told me I was the only pupil she ever had. So she didn't, didn't have to use the cane on. Right. Really. And I never brought her apples around like that. Like, But uh, uh, she, was a, uh, she told me uh, in her teaching career, the only person she never had the cane was myself. Well, Billy oh, McFarland. Barry, the cane, so it was. Do you remember that yourself? I do indeed. Do you, I were do you indeed. ever caned yourself? I was. Oh, you're a bad boy, too. A bad boy. <laughs> a bad boy. <laughs> Billy, what's your favourite childhood memory going up? I know you probably have many, but do you have any single favourite childhood yes, memory? Yes, I do. I have many, but Christmas was always a very a very special time in our house. You. And, and at the early stages, there was very little... There was little or no toys from Santa Claus, and but the excitement of it, and and in those days it only seemed to build up about two weeks prior to Christmas, and do you know this? I, th I think it was better because uh, those two weeks was magic. I remember I just couldn't sleep in my bed, and we always got something like an orange or an apple or a, a tennis ball or something not very very uh, expensive or, or big, but we cherished everything we got. And I remember the first. Uh, one Christmas I got a little wooden lorry and I remember to this day, I remember the smell of the, the, the fresh paint on it. it was bright red and bright green and I was convinced it came from Santa Claus. But I, I later uh, uh, discovered that my father had a friend called Paddy Dornan who worked in the Old Bleach uh, uh, Lennon Company and he was a carpenter and he made this lorry for uh, my father to give to me at Christmas because quite frankly uh, my parents couldn't afford the, right. to buy it on at Christmas. And I, I remember the fresh uh, the smell of the paint on it. It was bright red. Great days, green. of course, Billy. Great days. Going uh, back was, I, draw, I moved men with a load of imaginary sand and, uh, and stones in that little lorry. So I did. Right. Who, um, who was the biggest influence in your childhood as you grew up? Well, my mother and father were really the biggest influence because they were the absolute... Uh, Absolute es uh, essence of decency and, and, and honestly, and honestly, there used to be beggar men uh, patrol the You know, each and every day there would be at least one beggar man come to our house looking begging for money. Well, my mother or father couldn't give them any money because we had no money to give because we were, we were probably just as poor as they were. But without exception, uh, my mother would have brought them in and uh, made them what we called a fry and lost their fry. My mother kept about 20 hens and she made her own, uh, baked her own soda bread. And my father done odd jobs for the farmers in those days uh, after hours, after they worked in the, came home from the Old Bleach Linen Company. And I remember there were big joints of bacon. That was how the farmers paid my father. There were big joints of bacon hung from the ceiling. And my mother went and sliced a bit of bacon of that and, and made a fry. And there was no beggar that came to our house that went away hungry. See, Adela had a song, a hit song about that, didn't he? Going back well, a couple of years ago. And every time he sings, I can remember, I can remember those days, yeah. Right. right. And Billy, how did you get involved in the music business and in the show band business in particular? You were one of the first show band men to go on the road, weren't you? I was. I, I was uh, around the Clipper Carton time. Now they were, they were, they were one of the best bands that ever was. Like you know, but around that time we were doing good business. Like you know, maybe not 
to the extent that they were like. But I was the, one of the very first bands to ever go to England for a, a promoter called Bill Fuller in those days. He had ballrooms all over England and uh, Manchester and London. And I remember playing the Regency Rooms in London for him. So we were one of the first bands that went ever over there. But I was influenced by old time singers in those days. There was a guy called, a fella called Guy Mitchell. He was right. a, a big fan of, I was a big fan of his rather, like, and Frankie Lane and Perry Coma and all those guys, like, you know. Uh, I, I just th thought they were magic. They were what I call proper stars, real stars. I had the uh, uh, pleasure of playing on the same bill as Guy Mitchell later on in the talk of the town in Belfast, and I was telling him that well, he was one of the people that influenced me to start uh, uh, singing and playing. Of course, you'll be known as a trumpet player, and how did you get involved in playing the trumpet? Well, first, my, my first instrument, Hugh, was a, was a trombone, and I was playing, and I believe it or not, a jazz band at that particular time called the Northern Comets. But uh, the clubs were small, and the trombone was 
hitting people in the back of the neck and throwing right. it out there. So I thought I would uh, get something smaller and easier uh, transport it. And uh, it was, uh, the first lesson I got was uh, from a gentleman who played in a band with me called Joe Cook. And Joe Cook learned me, taught, showed me how to play the trumpet and I uh, just developed from then. And I've, I really like the sound of a trumpet. Like right. It's a nice solo instrument. Yeah. Can you remember the first recording you ever made? I do indeed. What, what was was a, song? a song called Take Me Home to Mama and it was recorded in a, a recording studio in Belfast called Peter Lloyd Studios. And uh, uh, we were in and out in less than an hour so we were, because every so often there's a taxi firm next door and their radio kept interfering and they would be singing away Take Me Home to Mama and then would you go to uh, Bally Go Martin and lift somebody <laughs> Uh, and the taxi, and that's what, and we had to go next door and said, look, can you give us half an hour without any taxi uh, radio interference? So they said, half an hour is all you'll get. So they gave us half an hour, and that's, we recorded that song in half an hour. And can you remember the first time you heard yourself on radio, and if so, where were you? The first time I heard myself on radio was uh, a gentleman who worked in Radio Ulster at that particular time, was Paddy O'Flaherty. And... Uh, it was actually that song that I I was in Carrick Fergus where I was uh, my first uh, uh, and foremost I was an electrician from uh, early days and I was working in Carrick Fergus and I had an old Morris beat up Morris minor van and I heard Paddy Flaherty playing Take Me Home to Mama and the old radio in the van halfway through the song the, <laughs> the radio broke down so Oh my God, know. yeah and you know I was so <coughs> disappointed and I was telling people about, you know, I come home and told my my, uh, my wife about it, and, all, and she didn't she didn't believe me that it was really on radio uh, television in that, or radio in that particular day, but uh, that was the first time I heard it. And it, to be honest, with you, it didn't sound that good on, on the radio. But do you remember Radio Caroline? I do indeed. That, that song "Take Me Home to Mama" went on to become very very popular on Radio Caroline at that particular time, and that was a good stepping stone for me to get into show business. You travelled all over the country, both Ireland and the UK, of course, as part of your show band. Tell us uh, what it was it like uh, then, and take us back to, say, leaving Belfast and maybe travelling to Cork or Galway or in a van and bad roads. What was it like back then? A lot different, Hugh, than it is now. We, we, we come down to, uh, to visit you today on the on the train, like, you know, and I was just, I was luxury the whole, whole way down. But I remember we had an old uh, Bedford Dormobile van, like, you know, and in those particular days, you seemed to go through endless towns when you left Belfast. I think now you could uh, come from Belfast and hit Cork without hitting, hitting any towns or villages. Like, but That's those right, days, yeah. you were going through small towns, and uh, I, I was a, a tradition going through small towns. If you saw a chip, a chip shop, you had to stop. Like you know, so uh, to be honest with you, it was an eight or nine hour journey in those days. Like you know, right. And uh, when you got to the Vino, how many hours did you actually play? Five. I remember actually playing in Westport and County Mayo six hours, nine till three in the morning. I used to, you know, it was bad enough nine till two, but I remember Westport was a 93 venue, and that was a marathon, so it was. And the band, there was no relief bands in those days. The band broke up. I, I went on to the drums, and somebody else went on to somebody else. Uh, there, was, there was no facility to have a break. You had to play, the music had to continue uh, from nine o'clock, uh, till three in the morning so we had to break up the van and it, it, it wasn't easy you had no. to be young and you had to be fit and you had to be sort of stupid to want to do it like, you and know. big crowds of course big crowds of people. Sure, there was there was never any but big crowds like there were, every the whole the dance halls in those days were, were full all the time every night like there was no i think there was nowhere else for them to go in those particular days you know you've recorded a lot of albums down through the years mm -hmm. what would be your favorite song do you have a favourite song? I have a favourite song, and it's a, a, a Willie Nelson classic called Blue Eyes Quiet in the Rain. And it, it would be my favourite country song to this very day. So, you know, but, and and if, if, you're, if you ask me why, uh, it's a good melody, and there's good words to it, and there's a strong chorus. I like, I like a chorus in a song, and I like a, a song that tells a story, but first and foremost, it's the melody that attracts me. Right. Yes. And tell me, Billy, what gives you more satisfaction in life? Well, I got a lot of satisfaction from many things, Hugh, and believe it or not, this, this may sound, <laughs> sound funny. If I go at this particular time of the year, 
I, I would go out and cut the grass. You know, and after I look, look at the grass, the lawn is well cut, and the smell of the, the new, newly cut grass, uh, that gives me a lot, a lot of satisfaction. And I, I get a lot of satisfaction out of uh, seeing my, my grandson grow up. So I do. I have only one grandchild, and he's grown up into a, a very good young man, and I get huge satisfaction from that. So I do. Right. And Billy Potts, your most treasured possession? Well, he, over the years, I have picked up quite a lot of uh, an awards, like, you know, including some from Hot Country. And they would be really my most, uh, I think they would be my most treasured possession. Uh, I remember the first one I, I got was the year I was married, uh, in 1961, and there wasn't many awards going in those days, and I have, I have a few gold and silver discs, and uh, I, I really like those, so I do. Right. So it's good to have them. And Billy, what has been the highlight or the highlights of your career to date? Well, Hugh, there was uh, several. A few years back, I had the honour and privilege of taking part in the London Irish Festival in London. Uh, the uh, venue escapes me at the moment, but it's a big open air venue. The Roundwood, Roundwood, Roundwood Park. That's the one. Yeah. And I am told, whether it's true or not, there's about 60,000 people out there. That's what I... I uh, and I wouldn't be surprised. It was like those big rock festivals there. There's banks of speakers away down the park. And I remember having uh, the pleasure and privilege again of sharing the uh, addressing them with the late Joe Dolan. He was a... a, a he was some operator, so it was like, you know. And that, that was one of the highlights of my... Uh, one of the highlights. And then quite recently, just around Christmas time there, David Hall Promotions puts on a, a thing called the Showband Show, three nights in the Waterfront Hall in Belfast and three nights in the Helix in Dublin, three nights in the Millennium Forum in Derry. And this year we had on it people like Brendan Boyer, Brendan Shine, and I'm going to leave somebody out and I'm going to offend somebody. We had uh, also Brendan Shine and uh, Brian Call and Philomena Begley and uh, George Jones and Crawford Bell and all, all, all the greats. All, all, all great people, you know, and when you hear Brendan Boyer and uh, Brian Call, you maybe haven't heard them for a while, you really forget how really good they were, and, and by crikey, they were good. And they're still good. They are still good. Like, Absolutely. You know. I remember back when I was just a little boy All the little things I played with I had just every toy Now that I am older And wiser in my life Well I never did appreciate Those little things in life We gotta learn to love The little things in life It's the simple things That make our lives so happy As we walk through the world her trouble and her strife. We gotta learn to love the little things in life. Sometimes I wander down the road to the wilder side of life, searching for those little dreams when I was in my prime. But as the time just passes And I get back on the road Some kid along the way Reminds me that I'm growing old We gotta learn to love The little things in life It's the simple things That make our life so happy As we walk through the world With our trouble and we gotta learn to love the little things in life. We gotta learn to love the little things in life. It's the simple things that make our lives so happy. As we walk through the world with our trouble and our strife, we gotta learn to love the little things in life. We gotta learn to love the little things in life.
And Billy, when did you start playing the trumpet? Were you always playing the trumpet in your first band or did that develop later on? I was known as a singer in those days. It's right. only, funny enough, it's only within the last uh, 10, 15 years that uh, people has recognised me uh, as, a, as, a, as a trumpet player. Yes. You know. What has been the most embarrassing uh, moment in your career, professionally? I remember I really needed to use a toilet one time. And when I say really need, I really, really, really did need to use the toilet queue. And it was one of these places where there's a, a ladies and a disabled toilet and a gents, like, you know, the gents was occupied and the ladies was occupied as well. And I had absolutely no choice other than use the disabled toilet, like, you know. And uh, I just had to do it, like, you know, but... Uh, when I come out, there was a lady waiting to go in, like, you know, and she was, God help her, she was in a wheelchair, and she was distressed, and I think she needed to use the toilet just every bit as much as I needed to do. But to my sheer disgust, there was people waiting to get into the, the gents and the lady at that time who knew me, like, you know, and I had the, dis the, the disgust, I could see the disgust in their face, you know. Right. And I, I very quickly developed a very unconvinced limp and walked away. <laughs> so, uh, 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 it wasn't the best moment of my life. To be <laughs> right. Yeah. If you weren't a show band star, Billy, uh, what career would you have um, pursued in life? Well, I, I, you know, first of all, I never, I never considered myself a, a, as a star, like, you know. But uh, I would have uh, probably been just... Uh, I didn't say just electrician. Uh, I liked I liked work and I liked woodwork. I never was a carpenter, but uh, I envy people who who do things with wood. I would love to have been a, a carpenter and uh, are doing something with wood. But I was always very interested in electronics and sound systems and things like that. There, I built my own. In the early days, I built my own sound systems, which was called the Farlow Sound, and I had it. I always liked a good uh, sound system and uh, I would have been something to do with electricals yeah. or electronics. But you had a very successful uh, electrical business. You had a very successful yes. business mm -hmm. for years. Well, I had. And that, that successful business sustained my family and uh, other families who uh, people worked with me. And uh, yes, it had done good for my own family and many other families as well. Billy, what was the one piece of advice you got growing up that you actually stuck with and followed? To this day, well, <laughs> you heard that this is maybe an overrated statement, Hugh. But the, I, my father always t said to me, he called me Willie. He says, Willie, don't get up, up the day job, you know. And he didn't mean it to, that he didn't think uh, that I would ever be in the show business. But he says, you'll always have your day job to go back to. You've served your time, he says, and you're a good electrician. And don't give that up. Now, now that I did give it up, and as I said, uh, you know, you know, maybe rolling on to the previous question there, uh, my electrical business was hugely successful and it sustained our family and other families as well. So uh, I believe that was good advice, like, you know. I was, I was a very fortunate person to be able to carry on in tandem, you know, my electrical business and my uh, uh, show business as well, because, I mean, I was my own boss. And uh, apart from the wife that is, I was my own boss. And if I was home very, very late from somewhere, I could have took an hour uh, the next morning and didn't have to get up at eight o'clock. So, no, that was my father gave me that advice, and I'm glad I'm glad I took it. You have been hugely successful and are hugely successful in the music business and continuing to do so. What do you put that down to? Uh, well, I, I would say, Hugh, uh, perseverance and hard work and believing in yourself and, and believing in what you do, like, you know. What advice would you give for new artists starting off in the business today? Well, when I see these new artists start, Hugh, how successful they are, I, I don't think they need any advice from, from somebody like me, but I would just say, as uh, just believe in what you do, but you're going to have to work very, very hard, uh, work as hard as you possibly can. And, you know, if you're rising in your career, uh, sure, shouldn't. there's one day your, your, your career will peak and you'll go down again. So if you're, I would say if you're nice to the people when you're going up, uh, they might be nice to you on your way down. On the way down, yeah. Mm. Billy, you've recorded several albums and have several hit albums to your credit. How do you go about picking tracks and songs for an album? Well, I'm very fortunate, Hugh, in many, many ways. I'm fortunate that 
that have about six uh, very good friends of mine who are died in the world country uh, 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 fans like you know and they look for can, they're continuously looking out and they say there's a song with do Billy and I have about six people who send me songs on a regular basis and not only that I have about four or five uh, uh, local songwriters who send me songs uh, very very regular and sometimes they send me very very good songs here that I can't record they're good songs all right but they just don't suit my style or my voice like you know the trumpet is a very popular instrument and continues to be so. Why is that? Well, I, I think it's a nice sound here. It's a pure sound. And, uh, and people used to say... Now, there's a, I met a man uh, about four or five days ago and he says, I was listening to your uh, latest song there and near my God to thee. He says, Billy, he says, that's a little piece of heaven on earth. And he says, it just sounds heavenly and it sounds, uh, it sounds like a piece of heaven on earth. What's your favourite item of clothing? When I'm going out to do a show, uh, I would never even know what I'm wearing that night. To open the suit cover, or open the bag. My wife has the bag packed for me, like you know. But I like a, a, I like comfortable shoes and I like a comfortable bed, because you're you're either in your shoes or your bed or you know. When you're not working and when you're not on stage, what are your hobbies? I suppose watching television, uh, I, I like watching the things on television and I like building, uh, I, I will still work at sound systems a bit, like I, I like building speaker systems and things like that there. Uh, some of do with electrics or electronics. Right. And your favourite holiday destination when you're well, going, on, going on holidays? Tenerife would be my favourite uh, place because it's, uh, it's a short, not too long a flight and you're, you're sure of the weather. I remember we used to meet Paddy Cole, you know the famous Paddy Cole, who played in the, the uh, Capital Show Band, one of the finest saxophone players that Ireland, Ireland has ever produced. And Paddy Cole and his wife, and Jean Fitzpatrick and his wife, and I used to, and Nan and I used to meet in Tenerife. We had, we had a great time. And I remember going into a restaurant one time. Now, Tenerife, uh, there's, at a particular time of year, there's a lot of those cockroaches, like, Creeping oh, along right. the street, yeah. like you know, yeah. you'd be walking along and you felt the crunch. Oh, you looked there and there was a cock, cockroach on your foot. But so much, uh, uh, Tenerife was uh, so famous for that. They had they were selling these toy cockroaches in, in, in the shops, like and Paddy Cole and myself and Jean Fitzpatrick and uh, his wife and Nan and uh, Paddy's wife were waiting to get a seat in, the, in this restaurant. And I remember I had this cockroach in my pocket. And I, Put it down by the way I was, I was uh, fixing my shoelace and pushed it in below the table. And there's a, a, a man and a woman sitting, they had their, they had their meal nearly, they had finished like, you know, and I says, you've got a visitor. And I looked in and they saw this huge toy cockroach and they thought it was a real one. Right. Up, up the goes and we got a seat, like, you know. Oh, right. Pa Paddy, Paddy has told that story a few times on radio as well. Like, right. you know.
Billy, what's your biggest fear? <coughs> a long illness, you. I'm, I'm a car that's, uh, I've been blessed. God has blessed me with, with, with great health all through my life. But uh, uh, a long illness, a long drawn out illness uh, where you couldn't or unable to look after yourself and you had to depend on others to care for yourself. Uh, I'd be a bit frightful of that, so I would like you know. Tell us about your latest recording. Well, my latest recording is uh, uh, my last one there, there's uh, Memories of Gold, which is uh, fortunately going very, very well for me. That's a, a track I was going to explain and tell you the guy was uh, I met in Balamina was telling me, he says that, that near my God to thee, he says a little piece of heaven and earth. And it's a mixture of uh, nearly an even number of vocals and trumpet uh, tunes as well, like you know. And uh, the uh, title track of it was written for me by a, a local songwriter called Vincent Soy uh, from County Down. And his brother wrote that uh, there's always a fire in the kitchen for Daniel O'Donnell. They're buried there. They were, uh, his brother uh, sadly is no longer with it, but they're. Vincent and Morris were two very, very famous songwriters, and that's my latest. I would usually bring out a CD and a DVD every year, but this year we're thinking about doing a compilation of uh, the best of or the ultimate collection or, or something along, along those lines. So we'll not be recording this year, but from spare to next year, we'll be recording an early part of the year. Do you like going to the recording studio? I love it. I love it because. Uh, there's two or three reasons why I go, I'm a, you're creating something, like, you know, and uh, the uh, fellow who I work with is a fellow called Willie McWhinney from Studio 19 in Clocky in County Down. He has all the very latest equipment and uh, a, a good equipment, and he knows how to use it. Not only does he know how to use it, Hugh, he would ask you what you want and what you want he'll give you. Like, you know, I think that's very important. In the early days, I used to record uh, with bigger... Uh, recording studios and you got what they thought they 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 want it like you know but uh, I'm fortunate that William O'Honey is my very very good friend and he, he knows what you want to cost he knows what you want mm -hmm. and he gives you what you want like and I think that's important like yeah Billy what message would you have for your friends and your fans um, finally Phew, there again fans isn't I don't I don't think I have many fans because I have more friends that like what I'm doing now. I'm not. I'm not fond of the name of, of fans because uh, uh, I would put it. That I have lots of friends that like what I do. Like you know, and the message I would say to them was, "Thank you very much indeed for your support over the years, and let's hope that there's a few more years left and uh, uh, continue to make music that you like. And uh, thank you for your support over." many many years and you continue to be very busy on the road um playing you, obviously you get a huge enjoyment from that what do you put that down to that you're 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 more popular now than you ever were well funny enough i i would probably you're probably right there Hugh, and saying I'm, I'm more popular than ever i was i'm not playing at, at dances anymore it's concerts and shows and theaters and things like that there but that, that type of thing suits me very very well going on and sing your six best songs here Ten best songs or whatever, but uh, I'm not a fan of playing a, a, a three-hour dance anymore. Like you know, realistically, enjoy it perhaps you more now than ever. So do, and I think the fact that I'm enjoying it and uh, people enjoy the type of music I'm playing, uh, I think that's the, the secret of it. Like you know, and I've good health. Uh, the Lord has blessed me with absolutely brilliant health.
my love loves me and all the wonders I see a rainbow shines in my window my love loves me This heart of mine was broke for quite a while This heart of mine has known a share of pain But once again, sweetheart, our future's plain Because my heart without you won't be the same Enter my heart, make it start beating once again Open the door, try once more, help me light the flame. Won't you come in, my love, and take away the dark? My happiness is to have you in my heart. This heart of mine was broke for quite a while This heart of mine has known its share of pain But once again, sweetheart, our future's plain Because my heart without you won't be the same Enter my heart, make it start beating once again Open the door Try once more, help me light the flame Won't you come in, my love, and take away the dark My happiness is to have you in my heart Enter my heart, make it start beating once again Open the door, try once more, help me light the flame Won't you come in, my love, and take away the dark my happiness is to have you in my heart. My happiness is to have you in my heart. Finally, Billy, just before we finish and going back to the short band years, would you have one favourite incident or one favourite, uh, you know, something that happened dur during those years in particular um, to tell us about? Well, there's things did happen to you. I, I know I wouldn't say they were they were favourite, but they, they, they stick in my mind. Uh, I remember playing the, the Sea Point Ballroom in, in Salt Hill in Galway uh, one night, and uh, that there was uh, the term that we used to use was packed to the rafters, like you know. And uh, looking at me now, you might think this is silly, but uh, I was in the top of the when I was young, a young fella, I was doing the, the uh, Jerry Lee Lewis things up on the top of the piano and things like, you know, and I had a pair of very tight grey trousers on, like, you know, and coming on my, on my descent from the top of the piano, I, I heard that rip, like, you know, and the, and the trousers just fell apart, you know, and uh, I'm sure it wasn't a very, very pretty sight, but I always remember that, and there was people that have come to me, you know, not not quite recently, but up to about 20 years ago, and they said, I was there the night your treasures bust in Seapoint, you know. So, uh, l little things like that, like, you know. And I remember getting four pumptures one night uh, heading to Galway. Got 
uh, four punters and, and one night we had, we carried two spare wheels in those days, like, you know. So uh, we had the, when we got the length of Galway and it was on a Sunday, we had to get the guys open to get the, the, the wheels fixed, like, and, and get two, we got two punctures on the way back. I don't know why people get punctures in those days uh, to the extent they're not getting them now, because I haven't had a puncture uh, for years and years and years. And in those days, whether they were bad tyres or whether we were just running the tyres to their very limit thread bare, maybe that's something to do with it. And Billy, when you were travelling up and down the roads those times, you should meet up with other artists, other singers, other oh, bands so. in various places throughout mm. the country? Various places. Usually a chip shop here or, or a filling station, like, you know. And we, ha we had a bit of banter. And I remember uh, one night we were stopped in, in a filling station just uh, south of Drogheda. And uh, this guy, came, you know, there, there was... The fresh men were there. So we're, and we were there... And I think Johnny Flynn from Chum was there. There were three, three, three wagons, like you know. And uh, Fr I, Frankie McBride was there too at the same time. And uh, this guy came in, and he's comforted me. He says, "Billy McFarlane." He says, "How you doing?" He says, "Do you not remember me?" I says, "No, I can't." And he says, "Do you cast your mind back to the Arcadia Ballroom in Port Rush?" Uh, in 1961. Now, we're, we're talking uh, uh, the, the 80s by this type of time. And this guy was quite offended that I didn't remember him uh, uh, waving up and speaking to me. Uh, and uh, they think because they, they, they're speaking up to you, they, you think that they think they, they, you should recognise them. But that's not that easy. Like right, you know. with all the fans, particularly back years upon years ago, and mm -hmm. big, big crowds. Well, Billy, thank you for joining us, uh, taking the time to join us on the show, and it's a great story, and continued success to you, and I have no doubt we'll be meeting again in the not too distant future. I think you, sure. Thank you very thank much, Billy McFarland. Thank you. Oh, the sign on the door says, come on in. We're so glad that you've come back home again Oh, we knew you wouldn't stay You just couldn't live that way Now I'm back in the honky-tonks again Oh, I'm back in the honky-tonks again Back where I've really always been Hear the laughter of the crowd Turn the jukebox way up loud Cause I'm back in the honky tonks again That old apron that she gave me never fit Every time I cut the grass I'd get half lit Oh, I knew if I had stayed She'd have drove me to my grave Now I'm back in the honky tonks again Oh, I'm back in the honky-tonks again Back where I've really always been Hear the laughter of the crowd Turn the jukebox way up loud Cause I'm back in the honky-tonks again Looking round, I can see that nothing's changed Step that beard, that old Max wearing, it sure looks strange You don't mean that's his wife, must have been a hell of a fight Oh, I'm back in the honky-tonks again Oh, I'm back in the honky-tonks again Hear the laughter of the crowd Turn the jukebox way up loud Cause I'm back in the honky-tonks again Oh, I'm back in the honky-tonks again Back where I've really always been Hear the laughter of the crowd Turn the jukebox way up loud Cause I'm back in the honky Again. Yes, I'm back in the honky-tonks again.